Great. Well, I think we'll we'll take because we have such a big um, uh, in person group too. We'll go around the table and just introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Brett Morgan. I'm faculty here and Aisha's chair, director of the nurse anesthesia program. And why don't we just go? Dr. Gold, um, I will just go on mute and hide my video. Perfect. Yes, mother. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that yes? Go on mute, mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Camila. I'm a second year in ECI student. Um, here at Duke. I'm the Associate Dean for Diversity and Inclusion here at Duke. Huh? I think it got a little feedback. Okay. Um, Iris Padilla, faculty at the School of Nursing and also a committee member. And those of you don't know me, my name is Aisha Allen. I'm a third student at Duke University. Uh, we're going to get started. Yeah, we'll so, also in the process, okay, yeah, yeah. just really quickly. Uh, and then, like I said, Dr. Gould, can you tell us who the other folks are? Um, this friend's school. Awesome, awesome. And your mom. Yes, and my mother. And your mom. Hi, mom. Um, so we, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how this is going to work. We will um, allow, Aisha will present her DMP work to us, and then we will open it up for discussion amongst everybody. Uh, and everyone have an opportunity to, to ask questions and engage in conversation. And then we will move to um, a closed um, a closed committee conversation after that. And we will discuss sort of how you did and all that. And then we will, at that time, we will actually, Dr. Gold will stay on Zoom and then we'll ask everybody else to come on. And then we'll have you come back in the room and, and we'll discuss Next All right, so I will hand it to Aisha. Uh, really quickly, everyone, can you remember to mute yourselves that are watching on Zoom? We're still getting a little feedback right now, so make sure you remove yourself. Um, and remember to exit when we uh, ask you to exit. All right, so the title of my DMP project is Utilizing the Implicit Association Test and Training Tools to Reduce Implicit Bias in CRNAs. And we our introduction, so I'm going to skip that again. I knew early on that I wanted to, my DMP work to be about the documented healthcare disparities of African Americans. There are healthcare disparities surrounding the management of pain between Blacks or African Americans and Whites or non Hispanic Whites. These differences are hypothesized to be the result of a combination of internal and external factors, that are said, patient characteristics and provider characteristics. Make sure everyone's on mute. All right. All right, cool. Make sure everyone's mute again. Um, so, internal and external factors. For the purposes of this project, we wanted to focus on implicit bias as an external, external factor in biological African American um, factors as contributors to this healthcare disparity. When there is a patient disease or condition, we often look at our patient's modifiable factors, be it weight loss or exercising. In the case of African-American disparities, I wanted to examine whether or not there was something that we could do as healthcare providers and modify that. The Institute of Medicine released a 382 page report titled Unequal Treatment, Confronting Racial and Ethnic Disparities in Care. Leaders in pain medicine developed a document that summarized pain and all of its implications. What pain is, the definition, acute versus chronic, and who suffers more. It also included pain disparities. Um, it summarized that pain disparities, there are disparities in how pain is perceived and treated, that pain can cause psychological and cognitive problems, that disparities stem from both patient and providers in all settings, from the operating room all the way to primary care, and that all health care professionals must develop skills and competencies to serve for diverse patient populations. 
They also summarized that there are 70 million visits and $600 million in treatment and lost work productivity related to pain. They also made a recommendation, 4.2 specifically, that in order to improve upon the pain disparity, we can improve curriculum and education for healthcare professionals. Some quick definitions um, that will be used throughout the rest of this presentation. Um, African American, or AA, and black are synonymous. Non-Hispanic white, NHW, and white are synonymous. HCP, healthcare professional, implicit bias, um, and the implicit association test, or the IAT. And um, we're going to be talking about explicit bias and the surveys that we're going to be using. And I want to establish a baseline for the demographic makeup quickly about patients and healthcare providers. Uh, racial and ethnic minorities make up about one third of the United States population and will become the majority of the population by 2043. Um, it's projected that by 2050, the U.S. population will increase to more than 430 million people, African Americans constituting 13% of that, or a total of 60 million. And in all of healthcare specialties, nurse physicians and dentists included, uh, whites make up at least 60 to 70 percent of this workforce, with African Americans making up two to five percent. So, to give you an example of the pain treatment disparity, I included a retrospective chart review. This was um, done in the United States, and it sampled 34 studies. At least one aim or analysis compared prescription of analgesia for pain between a racial or ethnic minority and the majority or white group. Pain was coded as traumatic or surgical, like a bone fracture or post-op pain, non-traumatic or non-surgical, like a migraine, back pain, abdominal pain, or osteoarthritis, also coded as cancer pain or mixed pain. They wanted to study the magnitude of association between race and analgesia treatment. The outcomes they were studying were prescription of any analgesia, prescription of opioid analgesia, and prescription of non-opioid analgesia. They found that African Americans were 22% less likely than whites to receive any analgesia at all, 29% less likely to receive treatment with an opioid, and African Americans were more likely to receive a non-opioid, like Celebrex. So I'm going to pre present some information about implicit bias. Implicit bias is an unconscious and uncontrollable association by, made by a person compared to explicit biases that are conscious and deliberate. We can say that we explicitly believe in something, such as equity, we truly believe it, but then unintentionally act in a way that is biased and discriminatory. In everyday life, people experience automatic, spontaneous thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that are different from what they desire. Like bad habits, like biting your fingernails, um, these things are both unintentional and extremely difficult to control. So, implicit bias often arises from stereotypes. Implicit bias principles are not limited to any particular way of categorizing people. They also apply to gender, sexual orientation, age, and disability, to name a few. Often these spontaneous reactions arise from stereotypes and influence our impressions, of people and how we treat them. We all learn and develop unintentional bias, and it's related to different social groups. Implicit bias can be quantified and tested using the IAT, the Implicit Association Test. It was developed by Greenwald and colleagues in conjunction with the Harvard Psychology Department. It detects the strength of a person's automatic associations, and they ask participants to categorize certain stimuli, which we will discuss in a moment. There are different types of the IAT. There's a race IAT, stereotype IAT, skin color, gender, age, etc. And the implicit bias is measured by a D-score, which again we'll talk about in a moment. For example, the gender science IAT reveals that most people associate women more strongly with liberal arts and men more strongly with science. For the purposes of this study, we use the race IAT. And overall, with the race IAT, 70% of individuals have an implicit preference or bias against blacks. Implicit present for present preference for whites or bias against blacks. So some literature about the implicit bias in healthcare specifically. The first review of literature by Mina and colleagues wanted to eliminate various protocols and study only those that use the reliable and validated IAT tool. 
Uh, the review of literature included 37 studies that use the IHG specifically. And of those 37, 31 reported that reported the IAT means, 26 found that healthcare providers have a level of pro-white or anti-black bias. They also found that pro-white implicit bias correlated with decreased treatment recommendations, fewer follow-up appointments for African-Americans, and decreased satisfaction ratings from black patients. In the next uh, systematic review by Fitzgerald and Hearst to the right, they examined evidence that healthcare providers displayed implicit bias for those patients as well. Um, 35 found evidence of implicit bias in healthcare professionals. And of those 35, 27 examined specifically racial and ethnic bias. 25 of those found overall implicit bias toward minorities. And this bias was evident in diagnosis, treatment, number of questions asked, number of tests ordered. Please make sure you're on mute. All right. So this next study, they wanted to test physician implicit bias in the, there you go, um, in the prediction of thrombolysis treatment or recommendation. Green and colleagues um, studied 200. Mm -hmm. It said Jason, whoever that is, is um, the one that was in. We're just going to go through and mute everybody. Unfortunately, we have quite a few people who are not muting themselves, and it's making it difficult for us to hear. So if you're on Zoom, could you please mute? Yeah, quite a few people, which is great, but we need to be on the Morgan, mute yourself. I wish there was a way just to mute yeah. everybody, but I don't think there is. There is. There is. Do you, you know how? Show us not this person. All right. We're going to keep trying. Yeah. All right. All right, so Green and colleagues wanted to test physician implicit bias in the prediction of thrombolysis treatment or recommendation. Um, physicians reported that they felt no explicit biases. However, IAT results show that there was an implicit pro-white preference among physicians. The IAT results also showed physicians believe in stereotypes associated with African Americans, of African Americans being less cooperative with medical procedures and less cooperative generally. The likelihood that physicians would treat white patients but not black patients for thrombolysis increased as an implicit bias increased. I'll give you guys some background information of um, explicit bias. All right. So implicit bias is what is displayed or explicitly said or talked about. Um, implicit and explicit measures together are linked to discriminatory outcomes. Um, they're also used as determinants of behavior in social settings, like the hospital. Um, and then research also shows that explicit bias is typically low. As That's going to be us. I just have that one. <laughs> um, explicit bias can be studied using a few different tools. In, our, in this quality improvement project, we use the ATD or the Attitudes Towards Black Scale, developed by John Brigham, and the Concerns About Discrimination, developed by Patricia DePayne, which we will talk about in a few moments. Like we previously talked about, there are in external and internal factors as contributors to the pain disparity. Um, there are biological differences in the African American population that are based in neurophysiological sciences. And that's what I'll talk about in just a moment.
Him and colleagues included 41 studies in their systematic review and meta-analysis. They reviewed uh, studies that incorporated the heat and thermal pressure pain, cold pain, and mechanical pricking pain that were given to the participants. Participant reported their pain intensities from zero to 100 and their pain tolerances. Pain tolerance being the measured magnitude of pain that could be tolerated. They found that African Americans had lower pain tolerances, higher pain ratings, increased temporal summation index, which I'll discuss in a second, um, no significant decreases or differences in pressure pain, and a decreased cold pain threshold. So they split up these groups into white participants and black participants, and each tested them with the same types of pain, cold, mechanical, pricking, and all of this. And these are what they have found. Now, in regard to um, temporal summation, as an anesthesia term that we use, um, it can be thought about, and we break it down, it can be thought about as a first pain and a second pain. So the first pain could be the thermal pain, the electrode, and then the second pain could be thought of um, the throbbing or the heat that you feel afterwards. And that's all related to the windup of the dorsal horns in the neuron. All right. So this first study here on the left by Campbell and colleagues examined ethnic differences in responses to multiple experimental pain, just like the ones we just discussed. They included 120 uh, participants, 62 were African American, 58 were white. They found that African Americans had lower tolerances for heat pain, cold pressor pain, and ischemic pain. They had higher ratings of intensity and, unpleasant, and unpleasantness for heat stimuli. And African Americans had a greater temporal summation at 49 degrees and 52 degrees Celsius for the heat pain. And the next study to the right 